The Hickory Fire Department is going to explain how to do an effective smoke alarm canvassing or blitz that will combine education with technology to reduce fire deaths and injuries in high risk fire areas. All right, good morning everyone. Hope you all are doing well today. As you know, we have an upcoming smoke alarm neighborhood canvas that we're going to be doing here in Hickory. Um, before we do that, we need to determine some things, such as, first of all, where are we going? What do we need to do to prepare for this blitz? And we've got to figure out who's going to be doing this. So, to start off with, how do you think we need to determine the neighborhood that we're going into? Anybody have any ideas? Go with your local fire stations. Yeah, your local fire districts, look at the statistics that are in your local fire station districts. Um, if you have a neighborhood that just stands out because you've had a lot more fires in that area than usual, that is excellent. You know, that is a prime candidate for a smoke alarm canvassing. Anyone else have any ideas? Uh, maybe census demographics? Yeah, demographics. Look at the minority populations that you have. Um, your high-risk fire populations tend to be minorities, um, low-income families, families that have senior citizens, disabled, or even young children. And also, too, non-English speaking families are tend to be one of the higher risk populations as well. So demographics is an excellent tool to use. What else? What about the, the date or the housing type? You're exactly right. The housing type and the age of the housing is really appropriate. Those are some very good ideas. Now, the neighborhood that we have picked here in Hickory, we picked a neighborhood in the northeast section of town. The northeast section of town has a prime neighborhood that meets all of these characteristics that each of you have mentioned. So we'll be going out here to conduct our blitz. Now, our plan of action. First of all, we've got to set down a date and a time. What is convenient for us that we can go out and do it that is also a good time to catch the most number of people at home that we can? In addition, we need to talk about what we're going to wear. Experience has shown through previous blitzes that we've done, the best thing for us to wear is what you're wearing now. Your uniform pants and your fire department t-shirts. Also, too, we need to establish our teams. We've got to get everyone on the same page, get everyone coordinated with the exact jobs that they're going to be doing and what they're responsible for. This way, the blitz will go efficiently and smoothly and quickly, and we'll be able to get it done as best as we can. Some other things that we need to look at in the neighborhood that we're going to are how many volunteers are we going to need? Are we going to need translators on our blitzing teams that we have out there? If so, what languages are spoken? What is the primary language of that area? We also need to look at cultural differences. Remember, safety is your number one thing. No matter what neighborhood that we're going into and where we're going, safety is your number one key. Yes, sir? How are we going to let the people in the neighborhoods know when we're coming to see them? That is an excellent question. What we're going to do is we're going to go out and hang door tags. Could you please hand me that? Thank you. The door tags that we're going to use are simple. We go out to every home and we hang this door tag up on every single doorknob on every single home in that community. What the door tag simply says is that our department is going to be coming out to their community on the day and time of the canvas that we're going to be putting up smoke detectors for them and educating them on home fire safety. Thank you, sir. Another tag that we're going to carry in our bags the day of the canvas is also a very important one. You might hand me that. Thank you. This tag says that we missed them. On the day of the canvas when we're going to be going around door to door, if we come up on a home and the people are either not home or we can't get an answer at the door, then what we will do is we will hang this tag up on their door. The tag says, we missed you. It explains what we were doing there, why we were there, and it also gives our contact information so that way they can contact us to let us know, hey, I do need a smoke alarm. I wish that you would come back. Also on the back side of the tag, it has fire safety tips for them in both English and Spanish. Okay, now let's talk about who is going to be doing what when we go out to do our community canvas. Now remember, we're going out in teams. So first of all, what team members are we going to need while we are out in the field? To begin with, we need installers. The installer is the person who is actually installing the alarms while you are there. This is the person that will prepare the smoke alarm, use the tools, 
and mount the smoke alarm in its appropriate location. The next team member that we've got to have is another important one, and that is the person who is handling the paperwork. This person will be responsible for carrying the clipboard, and in your clipboard you have the smoke alarm reporting forms that we have that document the important statistics that we need. In addition to completing the paperwork forms, you have to document also when the smoke alarm is installed. On each of our smoke alarms, we have two different labels. The first one on the back of the smoke alarm simply says, this alarm was installed by the City of Hickory Fire Department and it puts down the date that you installed it and the name of the person who installed it. This is important so that way if we go back to this residence on a later date in the future we can know exactly when this alarm was put in so that way if we need to repair anything or replace the alarm or change batteries then we know exactly when it was put in without any question. The other label that we have that the person who's doing paperwork needs to know about is actually on the box of the smoke alarm and that label has a unique number for that alarm. This helps us to track all the alarms that are put in for accountability reasons. Remember a lot of our alarms come through grant funding so we have to be able to account for each and every smoke alarm that we put in and where it goes and how it was used. Another important aspect of our installation team is education. Remember, education is the primary reason that we are out here. We want the residents to be safe from fire and other life safety hazards that they may have in their homes. So education is a big thing. Explain to the resident what their alarms are. Explain to them how to test their smoke alarms, how to change the battery if that is needed, also, too, you want to explain to them the difference between the alarms you're putting up. For example, if you're putting up smoke alarms and carbon monoxide alarms, they need to know what each alarm is used for and the difference in the sound of the alarm. Make sure that the residents are familiar with the sound of their alarm, so that way, in the event of an emergency, they are prepared to evacuate immediately. We need to help them to locate two ways out of every room in their house and to determine a safe family meeting place out in the front yard or wherever of their residence. It's also a good idea to leave some educational materials with this resident. In every smoke alarm installation kit that we have, we carry educational materials. The educational materials that you leave need to be age appropriate and also need to be in the appropriate language for the residents living in this home. Also too, we can't forget the kids. Just because we're leaving stuff for the adults, we've got to help the kids to be prepared as well. So explain to the kids what the smoke alarms sound like, what they need to do, the importance of their family escape plan, and leave them some goodies with them such as coloring books, plastic fire hats, or any goodies that you may have for the kids helps to reinforce the safety messages. After you install the smoke alarm, be sure to leave the owner's manual with them. That way they have a record of us putting the smoke alarm in, when the alarm was put in, and any important information that the manufacturer of that alarm needs them to know.